Yes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Knitting Today with me. I'm Nancy here at the Stitch and Post. And today I want to introduce a new yarn we just got in, so we're very excited. It's called Sesame. And Val can show, I'm going to make her work again, to pick up and show you the colors. And I'll show you the pattern book. It just got up online. Uh, we have six new colors. They are absolutely beautiful. And so today, um, showing you this, this is um, our shawl. It's called the Carib Shawl. Um, makes me think of chocolate, actually, in this color. Uh, and I, it's a really beautiful shawl that uses uh, cables. It's somewhat reversible on it. And I'm wondering, did I put it on backwards? I did not. Um, or I did. But we'll show the other side as well. We'll flip it. And show. It's really a, a pretty pattern. It's a knit pearl with yarn overs. So there's some detailing, and the holes are how you decrease or increase. And the book is Barocco Sesame. And the yarn is 230 yards, and it's $18. And I like squishy yarn, and it is a worsted weight. Um, so it's really pretty, and it has some slubs, and it's great color. And if you notice on this, it kind of stripes. So it's not what I'm going to call a marled yarn. It does more of a striping effect to it. And so I thought today, since we were showing this yarn, and we showed our other yarn, Medina, a couple of weeks ago, I wanted to talk about color today and ha the difference between what a marled yarn is, a stripe yarn, to more of a tonal yarn, and how it affects your knitting and your patterns. Because um, I've had some questions, um, some with the fog cutter sweater we just did. Um, I'm coming up to another sweater that we'll be doing at the end of the summer if you're local. It's an in-store project. It's the sweater pitch, uh, also up on our website now. So let's talk color and what different colors are. So as I've stated, sesame is somewhat of a striped yarn. And by that, you do have, notice this kind of stripes out. And you see the different colors as it goes. So it has a little bit of both, marling and striping. What does marling mean? When I say a yarn marls or all over color, and I'm going to use, this is a pattern called Find Your Fade, and I'm using this today for a lot of my example. This one was done by Val. One of my few projects I've finished. And she finished. She took this, I think, to Bali a couple of years ago um, because she knew she'd have a really long flight. It was either there or the Morocco flight, and she wanted something to do on the plane. And so she started this. And I'm not sure she got a lot done. And I do want to joke because it starts way down here, and she brought it back to me, and she goes, this looks very funny. I'm only up to here. And I won't say what else. So this is Val's, and this one's mine. And let me get to my beginning so I can show, and mine blocked out much larger than hers. I'm a looser knitter on it. And so what I want to talk about today is some of the differences. Now, we both use Expert knitter? No. Beginning knitter. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. The difference is in the lace. And that's where I want to focus today on is patterning. If you look at Val's lace pattern, she used a yarn. Now, I took a thicker yarn than what we used here. This is fingering weight. And this is by yarn Sonoma. And this will marl out similar to what Val has here. So by that, it's going to be all over dappling of colors. 
same as you see up here. In other words, how do you feel, and you as the customer and the knitter, feel about this lace? I and think it's awesome. Val liked the overall look of color, but she's a color specialist. And so she focused on hers on color and how it interacted with each other. For me, and this is the difference between knitters and what I want to show, is I liked my lace in what I consider more a tonal. In other words, I wanted to see more of the lace, and I picked a more, I don't want to say a more solid, because there's a little variegation, a tonal yarn. Thus it gated into the color. And you as the knitter have to decide what you like better. So when we talk about patterns and different sweaters and different things, and I'll pull some more samples off if you want, I brought another, decide what you like and what you want to see. Because a lot of times people will come in and say, okay, what would you use? And the reality is it's not what I use because my likes or dislikes are different than yours. So wherever you're located and whatever store you go to shop at, and I hope it's your local yarn shop and not big box. I'm prejudiced. I like to support local. I hope you'll think about rather than following the color you see on the cover or the idea you see of our sample, which is why we have two different ones here, you pick what you like. And you can also get a yarn that has very little color varying and will still show pattern, but will also show color. And how does this work up? So another sample I have here. Are there any questions so far? I'm having a little connection issues, it seems. So I apologize, everybody, for the little reconnect thing you keep getting. But we're moving on. OK. So this is a pattern that we have here called Blend on the Water. This was done by Ba Yarn using the Sonoma yarn, which is why I brought this over. And it has a number of colors. And what I want to focus on is this section right here. And the reason why irrigated one and a solid one. And these are slip stitches, which means for two rows, you have just literally slipped the yarn from the left to the right, if you're a right-hand knitter and not knit them. So what does that do? Well, if I used these two cut yarns together and I slip this over it, you're gonna see this as a stripe, vertical, you know, uh, vertical as opposed to horizontal, but you're gonna see it just like you do here, it shows up. So it's a way to bring um, symmetry or a different idea. And if you look down here, they use the same color the whole time. But it still shows that slip stitch. And you still see it. Up here, each section here is the same yarn with slip stitches. How do I know these were slipped over? And what it's doing is just adding texture and detail. So you're still getting that overall color, but you are seeing texture here as opposed to this solid that interrupts the color. So is this that yarn? Is it that is. that type of yarn? Yes. Okay. This is this, which is why I brought it over. So I it couldn't pull fast enough. So the variation in here is just the little variation of color within color the with yarn. It. Okay. And so if I open up this skein and you can see it's kind of speckled, 
the best way when you open up a hank of yarn or a skein of yarn, and remember, you must wind this into a ball before you knit it. If I wind this kind of around my hand, you're getting almost that overall look of those colors melding together. Same now, and I want to do this again because if I do this with this yarn and I open this up to where you see it, see how this comes out? You get a little bit of this solid but you're seeing still a lot of the dark coming through because it is throughout that skein of yarn. Mm -hmm. It's throughout most of it, if I roll it around. Here, when I open this up, that dappling of color is not as prominent to the grays. So you see color, but it isn't, for instance, all the way down in big chunks, smaller chunks. Thus, it's not as loud of a yarn, which you're contrasting, yeah. better word, um, for it. And it really comes down to, when you talk color, what you like on it. Um, so again, I love using color, but when you think about, and if I could use this, if this was cables, for instance, as opposed to just pattern shifting, if this was a cable, you wouldn't necessarily see that cable as much. Because of the color contrast. Because of the color contrast. So you would be doing all this work of cabling and counting, and not, I love cables, so it's not that hard, but you're not gonna see it as well as if this was uh, more of a solid. And you can really tell the difference in these two as far as the lace, solids versus marled. Mm -hmm. And I do wanna open this up, one of the last things, because, and this is gonna be harder, because in the overall look, and again, this is Andrea, I think it's Andrea Mowry's um, Find Your Fade pattern. If Val can see the difference here, and you can see she used dark blue here, and you see the lace more than you might see it here. Even though this has just two colors, some of which is solid. And the difference, if I throw mine out, every one of my lace sections is more of a tonal to a solid color. So that was kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Um, just because this new yarn sesame is so spectacular, I hope you'll go to our website to see it. Um, it's really beautiful. I think it would make an all over um, sweater spectacular and they have some great patterns in here. I have someone who's gonna do this front cover um, pattern as well um, with it. And it has some accessories and hats with it. Um, but if you did a sweater, I would recommend doing a more basic sweater so you show the yarn off. And that was what I wanted to show today is that yarn is meant to be shown as opposed to sometimes you want pattern detail and you wanna show off the pattern. There are times you just want to love the yarn and show it. So I hope you enjoyed today. Uh, we have a lot scheduled coming up, more yarn coming every month. So please continue to keep watching. Again, go back to the old videos. They are up on our Facebook page under videos uh, because I do try to throw techniques in. And one of the techniques we're gonna talk about or like a mini class will be continental knitting. 
for those of you who are interested um, in that. Uh, this August, I hope to showcase that as well. Um, so thank you. Stay well. Have a great day. And please support us, but please support your local yarn shop. Uh, we are all in this together. Thank you. Bye.